Steve Kerr, thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Uh, this is this is old hat for you, kind of, but hey, we're in a new city at least. First time <laughs> in five years. It is different. <laughs> it is different. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, love. We always love coming to Toronto. It's a great city, and uh, what's jumped out is how important this is to the whole yeah. country. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the whole country is so excited, and uh, you can feel it. Um, just right outside our hotel, there's like thousands of people. <laughs> It's crazy. It's uh, it, no, it really is exciting. And here you are to dash their dreams. So nice to see you. Um, your t big task of stopping Kawhi Leonard. Obviously, they couldn't do anything to shut him down in the last series. How do you approach him this time? Um, yeah, he's one of those guys who, you know, no matter what you do, he's gonna he's gonna score 25, 30 points. Try to make it as difficult as possible. Try to force some mistakes. Um, and whatever you do, you can't let other guys kill you too. So it's uh, it's really tricky. I mean, some guys you can game plan for and feel confident going in um, that you can really accomplish something. But uh, with a guy like Kawhi, you really have to feel it and probably adapt and adjust on the fly once the game starts. Yeah. We saw you had dinner up hot. What was that conversation that it was about? <laughs> we have dinner all the time, uh, but in you know modern life with Twitter and everything else, and <laughs> you can't hide. A photo and, <laughs> yeah, you can't hide anywhere. But uh, you know, I'm coaching with Pop uh, this summer on the uh, national team, okay. and so uh, but he has a place in San Francisco. Spends a little time there in the summer. So when he's in town, we usually get together. And most of our conversation was, was actually about uh, the, this summer's uh, world championship roster and, and what we were going to do, how we were going to approach it. and What wine you were going to be drinking well, then I don't, and I don't, I, don't, I don't pitch in on that side. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. And, well, that was so, okay. So, so does that come up? No. No. <laughs> no how does that not come up? It's just... I don't, you know, it, it, Pop is, it, it, he is an amazing guy. He really is. Like, he is, he loves the game so much. He has these principles. Mm -hmm. And he, he's not a guy who's going to say, hey, I'm angry at Kawhi and mm -hmm. here's how to, he, that's not Pop. Mm -hmm. Pop is, let's have a glass of wine and let's talk about this summer and yeah. let's have dinner and congrats on making the finals. And, I don't mean that he's yeah. sitting there like spilling secrets as a revenge mode right, because right. I don't see Greg doing that at all. No. I just mean that you're about to play an NBA finals and, and it's obviously front and center for right. you and he's right. your coaching mentor. Yeah, and yeah, and I would just think that conversation about this series would come up. Well, and, and I, I've I've done that in the past. I've mm -hmm. called them, you know, when they were out of the playoffs and we were still in it. I've, I've called them on occasion and said, what do you think about this or that? And mm -hmm. uh, I've done the same thing with Phil Jackson, you mm -hmm. know, sent him an email and, hey, what do you what do you think about this or that? Um, and we all do that. You mm -hmm. know, we uh, as coaches, we have friends um, in throughout the league and you lean on each other. You know, maybe you have a friend who just played a team yeah. uh, earlier in the playoffs. You call them, you say, what do you think? So everybody does that. Um, that's just part of it. <laughs> we have uh, some players we want to ask you if they're going to appear. Boogie Cousins just said he's questionable for this game, right? We're, we're not going to see Boogie, are we? I think I think we will. A chance that we see Boogie. I, I, think, I think you'll see him. I think the tricky part for DeMarcus is that, you know, it's been six weeks, I think, since he's played. And it's already difficult for, for big guys to catch up to the speed, the speed of, the of the game. Yeah. Conditioning. It's tough enough. Yeah, conditioning, rhythm, the speed. It's tough enough in the regular season. Mm -hmm. But to come back and then throw them out there in the finals against a team that's really right. fast, um, that's that's not an easy task. I think the, the one plus where I can't, I could see him playing with Marcus All. I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. defensively, I think he could do a right. good job on him out there. I think the biggest thing is, um, you know, we, we've got to find spots for him. Yeah. We've got to see... Um, if he can adapt quickly, you know, I, I told the media yesterday, if this were the regular season, I'd start him, throw him out there for 25 minutes. So whatever happened would happen. But this game one of the finals. Right. So we've got to be careful. We know he can help us, uh, but we also don't want to disrupt what we've done mm -hmm. the last five, six games where we've kind of found a rhythm and yeah. found a pattern without Kevin and, and our guys are carrying some momentum into the series. So uh, it's a little delicate, but we're, we'll, we'll figure it out. And, and he's been great. You know, he came to me last week. He goes, look, coach, whatever you ask of me, um, I'm fine with, you know, don't worry about me. And uh, he's, he's been fantastic. I want to take you back to the Houston series where I think game six, you play like 11 guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you played 11 guys. Is that 
you were just trying something new or you trusted your guys and knew that they were ready for that 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 situation i think we were replacing 43 minutes of kevin durant yeah. you know we, i played him uh the first five games of the series 40 plus minutes every night and we don't have a guy on the roster who's capable of playing 40 plus minutes so the way we were approaching it is let's do it by committee let's give 10 12 minutes to quinn cook let's give uh, an extra few minutes to alfonso mckinney you know jonas jurebko it's a good matchup against these guys and and so it was just a mix and match and and add up to 40 minutes but to get there we had to go 11 deep but it's kind of the way we like to play anyway yeah. you know we've we've done that over the years uh, we believe in our bench we believe in the power of playing strength our in numbers. players, strength in numbers. And uh, so that's why that win was so satisfying is that it, it was, uh, you know, it really kind of spoke to our culture and what we feel we're about. Now, Kevin did make the trip with you guys, which uh -huh. I know is up in the air. Does that bode well for him returning by game two, by game three? It's too early to tell. I mean, um, you know, he hasn't practiced with us yet. I'm not going to throw him into a finals game without him having practiced. So talking about practice yes exactly. All right. so. <laughs> thank you alan All right. <laughs> uh but no he needs to progress he's doing some on-court work individually now uh slowly but surely um but it, it's you know it's 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 not anything where you can say oh he'll be ready on x day yeah x day it's it's literally day to day we have to see how he's progressing well, I know that a lot of people are looking forward to seeing how that shakes out, particularly the Toronto Raptors. I was going to close here by asking you if you had another dad joke for us because you did such a good drink oh, one the other day. Man. But you just made an Allen Iverson practice joke, so that might be your quota. That's so not fine. a dad joke. <laughs> That's an NBA joke. A little bit of it's kind Is of it a dad. dad joke? It's a dad NBA joke. <laughs>